In the next 10 slides, I'm going to talk about learning outcomes and their relation with the content of the curriculum, the teaching learning strategies and assessment methods. Learning outcomes represent what is achieved and assessed at the end of a course of a study and not the aspirations are what is intended to be achieved. This statement differentiates between learning outcomes and learning objectives. Learning outcome is a very specific statement that describes exactly what a student will be able to do in some measurable way after attending a course. The learning outcomes are described as smart, that is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, and they are described by using action verbs. Here is a list of action verbs that can be used to describe learning outcomes according to Bloom's taxonomy. For example, in knowledge, the action verbs that can be used is list, define, recall, or arrange. In synthesis level, the action verbs would be create, compose, argue, or design, and in evaluation stage, maybe assess and judge, value, revise, and so on. The learning outcomes are defined differently for different levels of training. Learning outcomes focus on what student is able to do at the end of a session, and that would be called the topic learning outcome because it is at the end of a session. Or if it is at the end of a course, it would be called the course learning outcomes and if it is at the end of the program, it would be called program learning outcome. There is another term used, which is program educational uh, outcomes, or progress, uh, pro, uh, program educational objectives also. These are the learning outcomes which a graduate is expected to achieve few years after graduation. It may be regarding the specialization or attainment of certain skills. The Malaysian Medical Council and Malaysian Qualification Agency categorizes the program learning outcomes under following headings or areas, which is knowledge and understanding, cognitive skills, practical skills, interprofessional skills, uh, interpersonal skills, communication skills, and so on till the ethics and professionalism. Here is an example of a program learning outcome and program educational uh, learning outcome. This program learning outcome relates to ethics and professionalism category. And it states that at graduation, the student would be able to practice professionalism with ethical values in performing medical and healthcare services. And the related program educational objective would be that the physicians are surgeons because they, this is a few years after graduation. They will adhere to the professional course of ethics and enhance the humanistic values in overcoming challenges of the, progress, uh, of the profession. So this means that the educational program is not only aiming at the time of graduation, but also what happens many years after graduation. So the, uh, the teaching program should uh, have this ability to maintain these capabilities even years after graduation. The learning outcomes dictate us what should be the content, what should be the teaching learning 
activities and strategies and how students should be assessed. When we align the assessment tasks, the teaching learning strategies and the content with the learning outcome, it is termed as constructive alignment. Here is an example of a constructive alignment. The learning outcome, for example, here, upon graduation, a student will be able to perform lumbar puncture under supervision and interpret the results. And then the contents are accordingly identified. Teaching learning strategies are devised and assessment methods are decided. For example, in this content, if we take the example of taking consent, the teaching learning strategy would be role play and assessment would be OSCE or OSPE. Role play, of course, cannot be taught in the lecture and cannot be assessed in, in a written form. So we need to use methods different than lectures and, and written assessment. And therefore, we have chosen the role play and OSCE.